Hey there, so in today's video I'm going to go over how to grow your SaaS company once you've received funding and some common pitfalls to avoid. Um, let's jump right into it. And uh, just for some context here, we've done this before, brought some multiple SaaS companies past the multi, you know, million dollar ARR mark um, in you know, just a couple months. So let's go through this. So if you're funded, now what? We're going to talk about how to grow your SaaS faster. Now there's a couple of things to note. Now when it comes to growing a SaaS company, no matter what sort of version is it, B2B, B2C, etc., we kind of want to figure out what do most people do. I had a conversation with a SaaS founder just last week um, where they were actually speaking to me about talking to a bunch of agencies, figuring out, okay, look, we've got a few people that are wearing different hats in the company, but we want to figure out how do we actually grow from here um, for people that haven't actually done that before, right? So there are a couple of things that to keep in mind when you, especially when you're checking out like an agency or something like that. So when it comes to an agency, here's the things that I've noticed and I've looked at, you know, the top 50 or so agencies in the world and those that specify in, in doing SaaS, right? So here's what commonly comes up. So honestly, they don't really understand general, general marketing agencies don't really understand what's going on with SaaS metrics, right? When it comes to CAC to LTV ratios, when it comes to figuring out your growth margin, right? The rate of growth, and for what you're looking for. If you're trying to raise another round, making sure that that company really understands and is aligned with that, right? So make sure that you, they understand the SaaS metrics. Usually they don't, they kind of pull the wrong levers, right? So I'll explain that sort of in the incentives in a second here. Um, secondly is broad market. A lot of SaaS, a lot of just general marketing agencies and, and sort of traditional models when you go work with a company that might have, you know, they might do e-com, they might do, you know, courses and, and creators and, and stuff like that it's gonna be very different than growing a software company, right? For, for a bunch of reasons, mostly related to the revenue model and how you guys actually, how you actually grow and maintain, um, you know, growth. So broad market, right? They apply a lot of strategies that say, hey, look, this is working in e -comp to get clients. Why don't we run a lead magnet, do X, Y, Z, right? That doesn't necessarily work in all, you know, for a lot of SaaS companies. Now, secondly here, you don't understand the complexity of the product, right? They don't really understand what is it that you do because a lot of times SaaS at a high level can get complex in what you do, right? And so they might be marketing the wrong thing and putting the wrong message out there, which doesn't really allow for getting market resonance, right? Then that doesn't let you scale. Um, over here as well, perverse incentives. And I think this is kind of the biggest thing when it comes to working with an external agency is that they're, they're perspective doesn't align with where you're at, right? So the, the biggest thing is that a lot of agencies are just like, hey, look, we're gonna charge four, five, six, seven, eight K a month, maybe more, right? And what they'll do is they'll just take a fee, call it good, and, and that's it, right? They just wanna run the ads, uh, get some ads up as soon as possible and start generating leads, right? This is something I see all the time is a lot of companies get a lot of leads, but then they feed these leads to salespeople or BDRs, and it's super hard to convert them, right? Just because it's a general lead that may have opted into something kind of generic that doesn't actually align with your product, right? So that's another thing here. It means that when when there's not really an alignment between your marketing, which is oftentimes external, and your sales, which you know a lot of times would be you as the founder, or if you have a small sales team, sales manager, et cetera, that there's gonna be some, some mismatches there. Um, so this is one of the biggest things to watch out for because you're spending money on marketing, you're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on your marketing spend but if that's not actually transferring into warm leads that sales can convert, it doesn't really matter. It's pretty much a waste of money and it's extremely inefficient. Now, apart from that, we, we've seen that a lot of agencies will cannibalize your short-term strategy in order to get those wins, right? They wanna say, hey, look, we got you 50% increase in, in leads in the last couple of days, or we were able to increase you know, the front-end conversions on your funnel without actually looking at how does your lifetime value work, what does CAC look like, et cetera. Right, and a lot of this comes down to no skin in the game. Right, there, there. This would create a perverse incentive because, essentially, they can just spend the money, but there's no problem if they end up spending a lot of money, and, and it doesn't really fall back on their shoulders. Right, they'll say, hey, it was a market, it was a sales problem, or hey, uh, the leads weren't good. Right, it doesn't really come back and, and bite them. Uh, and, and finally, here, pricing is is based on spend. Now, this is a really interesting one. I had this call, you know, and and, and someone had explained to me like, hey. There's a big agency, I'm not gonna name who they are, but their pricing is really cool and, and this founder just went on to tell me a lot about how like, hey, you know, we're thinking between working with you guys and, and working with an external agency that's you know spent hundreds of millions of dollars and works with all these different types of companies and they said, hey, um, you know, this is their pricing model, isn't that cool? And I said, well, the pricing model that they outlined was really, hey, you spend $1,000, you spend 2,000 on ads, we'll take 1,000. You spend, 
4,000, we'll take 2,000. It was kind of like 50%, and then as it gets higher and higher, it decreased the amount of um, spend that the, or the amount that they pay the agency, right? And to me, this is this is fascinating because on the one hand, it makes it it's very intuitive for people to understand, which is why agencies do that. They're like, cool, we're gonna just take less than, than we spend on ads, right? And of course, you wouldn't spend more money on ads unless they're working, right? But here's the thing: ads oftentimes are a short to medium term solution, right? And what I mean by that is that if you get a bunch of leads now, that's gonna look good, but you don't know how effective that is until later, right? Or or until Let's say if you're trying to book calls, it's more clear like, hey, we're booking calls. Are we closing those calls? What are those numbers? And is that actually transferring to real sales that's happening? So that, that's really important to sort of understand. But, but the issue here is that when you're just doing it based on spend, the agency just wants you to spend more and more, right? They're just like, hey, look, we want you to spend, we want to increase the spend even though we're not really hitting KPIs. So that's just the, the one other thing that's, that really you should be looking at. And let me just explain this with an example over here. So I just chose like a random SaaS here. This is just a, a small indie SaaS by this guy. Um, I mean, I, maybe not that small anymore. I'm not sure how much revenue they're doing. But anyway, uh, Danny Postma made this. Basically, it's like an AI headshot generator, right? And so they charge 29 bucks, right, for, for, for a person to do an AI headshot. So. The way that this works is in a typical three-month agency relationship, going off what I've explained, they would come in and say, hey, we've got this B2C product, uh, we, you know, we'll run ads for you, and let's say they it can get this down to, you know, say 75 as a CAC, right? $75 to acquire one user. Now, the agency would probably say, hey, that's pretty good, right? Even though they're going to be, you would want to have this, right? Honestly, if, if the product is 29, you want that to be like about a third or less, right? Or even half, you know, it's pushing it a bit. So you'd want to acquire people for, for $15 or even better, you know, say nine or 10, right? But they're gonna say, hey, cool, you know, it's 75. This would mean that leads aren't actually, like maybe they got a bunch of leads, but they're not converting. And this would mean that your top of funnel traffic, sending these ads to cold groups of people is giving you a ne negative $46 return, right? And even still, the agencies are pretty strong and they, obviously they've convinced you to work with them. They're probably going to be able to convince you to say, hey, look, actually, we're going to be able to, to sell more and this price is going to go down and they'll, they'll assure you the results can improve. And this will just push you to spend more on ads and to optimize and sort of increase the spend because, you know, we're not spending enough. We need to try more angles. We need to try more audiences. We need to test all these sorts of things. They use a lot of like smoke and mirrors, as I would call it, to kind of tell you they need to increase this. You know, you spend five to 20K and I've seen this happen many, many times and sort of other issues are gonna pop up, right? Your company, you might have to deal with um, different marketing messages, you might have to deal with sales, maybe product, you need to improve something. You kind of don't get stay so focused on this, right? And the marketing agency is just pat pattering along, using your credit card, spending, 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 increasing that spend, and then of course making more themselves. And then finally here, lifetime value is going to uh, Say stay in around one month because if you think like first principles about a company like this, how many times do you need a headshot? Like one time, it's not a recurring service, right? So it doesn't make sense for this to be charging recurring. So lifetime value is about one month, meaning that the leads go uncontacted, you know, your money goes out, and then what? You're left with a big pile of leads of people that may, some might want to convert, a lot of them don't, and you've paid way more for acquiring a lead. Right? And then it, it falls onto you or your team or, or hiring some you know BDRs to go through these lists. And at which point, it's honestly too late, right? Because if you wait more than 24 hours for a lead, you know it's about 80, 80 to 85% likelihood that they're never gonna write back to you. Right? So you've effectively lost the spend. You've, you're pretty much out five to 20K of ad spend. You know, Let's just say half of that is then paid to the agency. So you're really out about, say, you know anywhere from seven to 30K, right? And then they'll tell you, hey, you didn't implement this correctly, you didn't spend enough, you didn't try this X, Y, Z, and kind of place the blame back on you, right? And that's really how this works for a lot of agencies, um, which is really unfortunate, and I've seen that happen a lot. So that's really why when when I had this conversation, this, the, this owner was saying to me, hey, well, they just have this really cool pricing model, but what do you guys do different? You know, I just see it's a different pricing model. So let me explain to you what's different and sort of why this needs to change. So we really focus on having a business ecosystem that, that works for you, right? So selling something at $29 a month is not really a scalable mechanism for you, right? For, for a lot of companies, you can watch my other videos on, on why B2B is really the way to go. And if you're watching this, I'm assuming you already understand that. So 
Essentially, if this product, if we were working with the headshot generator, what we would do is redesign the offer, make it B2B day one, right? Then what we would do is design the funnel, the landing page, et cetera, everything you need to have in place, including installing the systems, the backend, the CRMs, the follow-up sequences, all of that would just get done for you. We have a lot of templates, things that could just get this going within days, not weeks, months, et cetera. And if it's not in KPI, after launching, you know, we'll just redesign the offer and keep tweaking it until we get, you know, A-B tests to, to a really good spot there, hit KPI. Only if we hit that KPI, then we're going to increase the spend. You know, again, if we are spending 5 to 20K even more on ads, right, other issues might appear. That's totally fine. But the spend is still working because we've already matched that into KPI and are monitoring that it's there, right? Um, now, uh, instead of this here, I think I just copy pasted that. But what we'd, what we'd actually see is that even if other issues are appearing, we're actually focused on transitioning from leads, right? So we're getting meetings booked, so booked calls. And in this B2B system, we're also focusing on the sales and marketing plus sales optimization, right? So if we're optimizing for sales, right, this is a very different sort of market where instead of just getting a ton of leads to come through the pipeline, what we're actually doing is getting people to book in, have conversations with you, prove out that B2B offer, lock in the pricing, et cetera, and then we're able to sort of scale the B2B offer once we've established that people, like cold audience, wants to actually buy that. Not people that know you, not people that know, like, and trust you, but really a, a cold audience here. Now, this for us, you know, we this works really, really well. Um, once, we, once we're in KPI here, then we're able to really continue to spend on ad, right? Once, we were, once we're here, we're spending on ads, and then we can actually build out other initiatives, right? Then we can focus on leads, plus other things that, that aren't necessarily um, short-term money makers, right? This is long-term wins, right? So this could be anything from content funnels to SEO to a lot of other things, whether it's cold email, um, whether it's LinkedIn campaigns, other ad platforms, Google, it, like there's a lot of other things that we do here, community building, like all these things can be very attractive. Um, but really it comes down to sort of getting things right at the beginning and making sure you're scaling. And this is why clients stay with us for a long time is because we're able to actually generate these results and actually get people meetings booked. Now, just to make this sort of really clear, when we do this differently is that specificity, you should choose a company and it, you know, not even just us, but generally when you're thinking about this, if you're going to have brain surgery, you want to make sure you go to a neurosurgeon who's studied it for 20 years, right? So we only work with SaaS companies. We fix the sales components, right? Because it's not just important to say, hey, we do marketing, blah, blah, blah. We actually fix the sales component side of that. And we've got partners that have gotten funded, right? With just starting from zero to already getting funding within a few months. Um, we've got other clients that have hit multiple millions in annual recurring revenue, starting out from just hundreds of dollars uh, a month, right? We make sure that the incentives are aligned so that there's skin in the game. We actually install the systems for you, right? A lot of companies will just run the ads, say, you know, ciao, goodbye, that's it. We'll actually install the system. So whether you need help with hiring, whether you need help with actually converting the leads, the pitches, the sales scripts, et cetera, and how to do the marketing, like we'll install that into your company so that you have that entire infrastructure, which then will work even after work on as an agency or even after like what a typical agency would leave, we sort of install this. And, and this is where I don't really say we're an agency because we're actually focused on a lot of the other components, whether it's product, UX, onboarding, all these sorts of things, wherever that, that issue is in your in your pipeline, that's really where we try and check the focus and make sure we're, we're looking at that sort of stuff, right? And we mostly make our money through revenue share, right? So we're not gonna take equity and sort of cloud up your cap table. The main way that we do this is actually skin in the game, making sure that we're aligned with what we're doing, right? So that's kind of the main thing there. So we actually improve the holistic process, drive revenue. And finally, speed and efficiency, of course, larger companies that have thousands of clients, they, they just work slower. I just paid, you know, about 15K to have a consultant come in and check out what we're doing uh, with a certain process in our company. And they're a larger company, they've got great ads, and I, and I trust in them. And, you know, response time is about 48 hours, which is kind of slow, uh, honestly. When I just have a question, I want to get back and forth answers. It takes a long time. So what we offer is we really do have a small roster of clients. We've worked with 30 plus SaaS companies, but we're not taking on like new clients every day, right? I really want to make sure we're a good fit so that we actually can focus on them and scale them and, and have a really meaningful and thoughtful approach in place for them. Um, as I said, 
So bottlenecks, figure out what are the right things, what are the levers to be pulled, especially within SaaS, knowing is it we need to decrease CAC or is it that we need to increase lifetime value? Is it that we need to change the onboarding because we have churn here and there, looking at different cohorts, et cetera. We know how to do that, focused on just driving EBITDA and your bottom line, right? So that's really what we do. We're gonna move faster than your internal team because we've done it before and have seen a lot of different variations. And that's really just what I built Cyberscape to be is about how do we increase the revenue generating activities for your company, which then align you for whatever you wanna do next, right? If you wanna go get funded, if you wanna go uh, exit in the future, all of these things are really predicated on quick revenue growth. And a lot of that for B2B and SaaS in general is you need more meetings, right? You need more meetings, you need to be more thoughtful and have a great process in place to actually convert those leads. So that's what we do. If you're interested in learning more about Cyberscape, how we do this and, and what's you know totally different out there than other say agencies or, or people that are doing marketing in this in this space, then go ahead and just book a call. We have a link in the, in the video description um, for you to do that. You can jump on, speak with me, and uh, we'll see if we're a good fit. But that's it. If you have any questions and generally, like I would love to hear your feedback on how what your experience may have been with other agencies in the past, and things that you would like to see, you know, please drop that as well. But I really think that what we've seen is installing an infrastructure, giving that to companies. That's honestly the best way. And having this revenue share of skin of the game is really what people want. So that's it. Hope you learned something here. And as you go and make your decision, whatever it is, um, as you, you know, a funded company and, and are checking this stuff out, then please drop, drop some insights as well from what you've seen. So that's it. Thank you so much. And I will see you in the next one.